Kindly silence your cell phones at this time. If you have been away from the church and are considering returning or need a refresher on Catholic basics, we offer a process called landings to help you. This eight-week process begins this Monday, January 9th at 6.30 p.m. in the Faith Formation Office Library. Please contact Bridget Passore at 757-495-1886, extension 411, to register. A new grief share session begins in a few weeks on January 24th. Contact Bridget to register for the support group for those who are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Our spaghetti dinner with musical group Fond Memories is Saturday, January 21st. Tickets are on sale this weekend in the Commons. Plan early, as, plan early to attend as these tickets sell out very quickly. The international dinner will be held Saturday, February 18th. Sign-ups for help can be found in the Commons. Please join in assisting us with this fun event. Please rise and greet those around you. and peace of God, our loving Father, be with each of you. In revealing himself to the Jewish people, God reached out to us, first of all to them, and then to us by his appearance to the Magi. At Christmas, we celebrate one event, and today we celebrate the second in the epiphany, which is a word that's technical but only means manifestation or showing, we celebrate this re revelation to us, to the people who are non-Jews. So we pray, especially about our sorrow, our sorrow for not obeying the Lord as we should have. Lord Jesus, you show us that it is not your will that we be other than saved. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your majesty is shown in your mercy and in compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Yes, my Savior, you call all people to be united in love 
and in praise. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God then have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to life everlasting. Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, granting your mercy now that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would the children please come forward? So hi, how are you? Good, good. Today we're celebrating the Feast of Epiphany. And this, and this, as Father said, the word Epiphany means opening up, unveiling, you know, seeing. And we, we call it that because today's the day that we, we hear the story of the three wise men or the three magi that came to, to pay homage, to pay respect to this most wonderful, wonderful baby. Who was that? It was baby Jesus, right. And where was he? Was he uh, in a bed? Was he doing all kinds of stuff? What was he, what was he doing? What was he doing? He was in a manger, he was in a manger right? For that, you know, where that's how they feed animals, right? With straw, that's where he was. It's not a place for a king to be born, is it? No. So these three, three magi brought gifts. What did they bring? Oh, what did they bring? Gold? Myrrh and 
and frankincense. That's terrific, young lady. Wow, great. I'm not going to ask you what that all means. <laughs> I'm not so sure either. But So you got gifts too, didn't you, on Christmas? Well, that's kind of like this is Christmas for Jesus. These three kings, these three important people come and they give him gifts. So we all have been given gifts by Jesus too, haven't we? So we want to go share them with others, all right? So you got lots of gold? You know, give, share it with the deacon. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to share that. I'm just joking. All right, who would like to carry? You get, I'm sorry, sweetheart. You knew all those three. You get to carry the cross. Young man right behind her. There you go. Out you go. We send you forth to hear the word of the Lord. Take these words to heart and walk in God's ways. Prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See darkness cover the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the, of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. nation on earth will adore you, O Lord. Every nation will adore you, Lord, every nation on earth. Every nation on earth will adore you, O Lord. Every nation will Judgment and thou the king with your justice the king son justice shall govern your people in peace and fairness your afflicted one every nation on earth will adore you O Lord every nation will adore Oh, justice shall bloom like a flower in his day, profound peace till the moon is no more. From sea to sea to the ends of the earth, may your rule extend. Every A 
A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and, sac and, and uh, scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star stopped over the place where Jesus was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and upon entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another route. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The Christmas season is wilting just a little bit. The decorations are sagging and beginning to look dusty. 
not here, of course, but I'm sure in your homes. <laughs> the holly leaves have faded and are curled in on themselves. And just as we have begun to think Christmas is over, the lights come on again. The wise men have come, and the crib gets a new lease on life. There is something very lovely about the legend of the three kings and their colorful entry on the scene. The church wants us to rejoice today, just like it were Christmas. This is a day that we have proclaimed to all the world that Jesus came to save all of us. All people are invited to love him. Jesus has been recognized now on this feast in narrative, principally by Mary and Joseph, and then by this crowd coming in with their camels and attendants and everything, and received these visitors as just as the shepherds before them. But the difference, they were all Jewish. The Magi are not Jewish. They are a people that we, they call, the Jewish would call Goyim. Every nation is represented by them. Everybody. But even as we rejoice listening to the gospel, there are horrible threats sounding in the background. The gospel only reveals the love of God for us. The very response of us back to God is multi-different. We see the world as it is now in narrative. We see the world as it is today. How some people ignore God. God's loveliness and practice their only loveliness. They find their kingdom, as it were, in themselves. They're threatened maybe by insecurities, making them afraid of the truth. Like Herod, they never actually find Jesus. There are those who do not hear of Jesus at all. They're ignorant of his identity. There are many like that even in Bethlehem. There are many like that around the world today. Jesus came to save them all. Nevertheless, all of them, all of us, Let's right from the very start of the sentence get those two inclusions. All of them, all of us, together. You know, some of the church documents, like the Vatican Council and everything, has it put very carefully. Whatever good or truth is found in the gospel, is given by him who enlightens all men and women that they may have strength and life. They find Jesus, but they have to find him fully. There are those who hear Jesus coming and they are filled with delight. I think many of you are fully aware of Jesus in your lives. There are those who truly find Jesus, and I know a lot of them. Those people are people who have realized that to find Jesus must be, must be expert in the matter. 
expert in their vision, their spiritual vision, expert in their heads as well as their souls. Not to find Jesus is occasioned very often by not looking. For God does not show himself to the world in the form of physical light, shining in all directions and in ways that compel the eye to fasten on them. Rather, he is suggested, as in the reading from Isaiah, with flashes of light. But there is more to them to that than what you first appear. Once the light has been seen, you must move towards it. Just like the Magi did. You have to cover the ground. One must move towards Christ who has come. I didn't quote myself then. I quoted Paul the sixth. We must move towards Christ. He's coming. He must be met. As we celebrate this Mass, we are able to share the joy of the wise men. We are filled with delight. As the Gospel says, because every one of us is called to salvation in Jesus. up in Newport, Rhode Island, Portuguese church, ethnic church, Jesus Savior, Jesus Savior. We have to always appreciate that truth. When we see Jesus imaged in our heads with Joseph and Mary, we offer gifts too, just like the Magi. We offer gifts of ourselves. Let's think about that for a moment. The wise men coming to offer their gifts are becoming now part of the Christmas festival for us. Most of us have received cards this season with a picture of the men or in camels making their way, led by this mysterious star, to the birthing place outside of Bethlehem. They become part of the magic and the mystery of the first Christmas. So it's easy to forget that their visit has a meaning behind the narrative. It has a meeting right now for you and me. In their journey to Jesus and in their giving gifts and doing homage to him, in all of that, God's giving the good news to you and me. The wise men are not members of the same religion as us. They're not members of the same nationality as Jesus. They're not Jews, they're foreigners. And would have been described in those days as pagans. The Romans would call them barbary, simply foreigners. So they came as representatives of those who are parts of the non-Jewish world. They've journeyed to Bethlehem representing the world outside of Israel. But as they do homage to Jesus on behalf of all those people in the world, they're approaching true religion. The Feast of the Epiphany then is a celebration that God is God of all, Jews and Gentiles, that we all will have to accept that he offers himself 
broadly, freely, to the salvation of anyone who turns to him. I say turns to him. Doesn't have to complete the circle. Maybe this side of the grave will never complete the circle. But turns to him. Authentically. God in Christ accepts people as they are. With, with whatever gifts they can offer him. He is the God of all nations, so there is no place in Christian theme, scheme of things for racial prejudice or contempt towards people of a different religious faith. Our God is a God of peace. Christ came to promise and to prove that God does not act towards men and women indiscriminately. Our God has no favorites. There are no special people who are particularly acceptable to him. Whatever good we see in any man or woman is a sign of the presence of God in their hearts. A longing for peace becomes an authentic sign of the Spirit of God. In his love, God created all nations for their words and deeds. Christians must rely that love and welcome are offered to anyone who draws near, as we were saying earlier, who turns towards God. Well, but there's something interesting, though, about turning towards God. The readings today offer that interesting bit in their themes, how they fit together. Isaiah and the Pauline reading and Matthew. The element that's common to all of them in this manifestation of God's gracious gift to the people of Epiphany, that's ourselves too, is announced by Isaiah first in his prophecy that the captivity of the people is going to be ended. They're going to be allowed to go back to their ruined city of Jerusalem. Matthew is stressing the fact that in the death and resurrection of Jesus, the captivity of all of us is won by our Savior, and that we are freed too. And the third part of the theme, in the third reading that I omitted, lies in the fact that proof of this is the magnetic draw that Jesus has dead and then alive for all of us. I think that I mentioned a week or so ago that they figure by 50 years from now the world the world will be significantly increased in Christians. Not necessarily in the U.S. of A., but throughout the, the whole globe. That is like the demonstration that the Catholic Church has to be authentic because nothing else would survive all the troubles it's had for 2,000 years all the difficulties it's had for 2,000 years in really living the faith. Any human institution would have 
fallen off the rolls of history long before if God wasn't with us. But he is, you see. Those three readings come together with an overall thread. The thread is trust. The Jews had to trust that God would lead them back to Jerusalem. The captivity in Babylon was over. The Jews had to trust, finally, those who would see the power of Jesus, convince, let's say, like Nicodemus and the other Pharisees who were good men, would have to see that there was a value for reading men's hearts. They can look and see come to look and see in other people a divine urge. And there has to be something like a magnet then drawing them. Success in conversion, if you will. And so, on this feast, we're talking about a celebration of trust. We can say a creed in a few moments. Deacon Tom can lead us in a creed. Technically, it's simply an affirmation of our trust. We can do it mechanically. Some priests, I myself do this, will occasionally vary the way we do the creed. One way that I do it, that would, may or may not impress you, but simply ask you to say amen to my proposition of Jesus as Savior. The title of that Portuguese church, Jesus Christ Savior. My Savior, your Savior. Amen, huh? Amen. We profess it, but we profess it joyfully. Joyfully. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and profess that faith as together we say, I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God wills that all mankind should come to recognize the love revealed in his Son. So we pray now, especially today, that those who have never heard of Christ, all of them, the Spirit is still given to those open to receive him. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy and religious, that they continue to bring the light of Christ to all people of every nation on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that the leaders of nations recognize the truth of the gospel and serve their people with justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our liturgy, sacraments, communal and private prayer, our Ascension family experiences ongoing conversion and transformation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in mind, body, and spirit, that they raise their eyes to the comfort of our God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> for those names of the chronically ill listed in the <coughs> bulletin, and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may home for them be eternal peace and filled with joy, especially Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, and for our parishioners Jerry Belby and Ann Zerpoli. For our deceased weekend mass intentions, Amelia and Ted Jewett, John Buckley, Marie Myers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Another one of our diocesan priests died recently, on the day, uh, Father McNally. He's pastor up in Covington uh, in Western Virginia. We pray for him. Heavenly Father, you have heard the prayers of your children. Grant that we may always be open to the spirit of truth. Forgive our pride that makes us times unwilling to go on learning and listening to your word. We ask all this through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is for each of us a loving Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which we are offered now not gold, not frankincense, not truth, but he who is by them proclaimed, sacrificed, and received Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appears in our, in our mortal nature, you make us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these glyphs gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of that last supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your professed religious, with the entire congregation here present, as we offer this sacrifice for the people of this parish, this community. Grant that the faithful, faithful of the church, particularly our own, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the good news. Keep us attentive, then, to the needs of each other, that sharing each other's grief and pain, but their joy and hope, their, the volume of their trust, we may faithfully bring each other the good news. Go forward together along the way of your kingdom and your kindness. Remember those who have a claim upon our prayers, all who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, all the dead whose faith you alone perhaps have known, who have walked towards you in partial ways, but fully too. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is finished, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, with all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Let us pray to God, the Father, who made all the words that Jesus gave us as a hymn of praise to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your kindness, keep us free from sin. Protect us from every needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon our faithfulness and grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, which we approach forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord, then, be with each of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace.
This is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Amen. May the body and the blood of Christ preserve our souls to life, life without end. Amen.
Let us pray again. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us salvation. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Thank you for gathering, both here and at home, uh, on this as the, the Feast of the Epiphany, the very last day of, uh, of the Christmas season. Yes, we all get to go home now and take down our Christmas decorations, right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> There are those, you know, day after Christmas, everything goes off, right? That's Christmas is over. Wrong. It's just beginning for those 12 days. So uh, I'd like to welcome any visitors or guests that might be with us here this morning. If you are one of those, would you stand and tell us your name and where you're from? Do we have any visitors or guests brave enough to, to show us yourself? We do. Here. Hello. And lady, how are you? Your name is... Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's an Amish country, isn't it? Is it an Am Amish country there? Yeah, okay. Well, great. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, <clears throat> by the way, this, as I say, we start, uh, we start tomorrow in ordinary time. We're back to that part of the, 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 the uh, liturgical year for a little while until, uh, until it's time to start over again with, uh, with Lent. Okay, so for the past three months, we have used our cards in the pews, that little thing we've been doing, to share how we've been disciples. This is to help highlight our vision theme of disciple. And so now, for the next three months, we're going to focus on our next vision theme, which is worship. When you come in today, you were given a prayer card and asked to pray the prayer prior to Mass. We'd like you to take the card home with you and pray it each day. Set a reminder on your phone if you need to, but for the next 30 days, try and make this prayer a part of your day. Sometime in February, we'll again place the cards in the pew and ask how this prayer has impacted your life in the last couple of months. That transformation is also part of our personal journey with God. This prayer is just the only way we can is not just the only way we can continue to draw closer to the Lord. Short prayer. Get it done in about a minute, less than that. Okay, Father Joseph, nice to have you back with us again. By the way, I'm Deacon Tom. It's normally Deacon Gary's mass, right? But but he's uh, he's flown back to the Midwest to be with his family for, uh, for their family reunion. So, you only want to fly out to the Midwest in the middle of this winter? <laughs> I like Father Daniel's idea. Let's go to Africa. It's warm that way. Let's now all stand and pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with you. May the salvation with God plan from all eternity be yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord send you the truth and love May his peace be in your hearts with joy. May, and may God bless you now, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. We now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thank you. Thanks be to God.